Hi everyone and welcome to part 26 of The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs. So Piper is officially living life on her own. It's just her and Dakota in this household, although it probably won't stay that way for very long. But my plan for the day is to have her get her mood up a little bit, go to the bathroom, eat, all of that, and then open up the vet clinic for business. Because unfortunately when I moved her into her own, uh, sorry, no, we're not going to go into world famous circus, but... When I moved her into her own household, I had to sell the vet clinic and then have her buy it back. And unfortunately, what is she? Oh, she's thinking about her grandmother. Oh, that's so, that's so cute. Like, I just like that. Even though some time has passed since when Maya passed away, she is still just keeping her in her thoughts. And I mean, she's also continuing her legacy in a way by running this place. But anywho, yeah, the process of selling it and having her buy it back did reset the star rating. So we are back down to one star, which really annoys me, but... I think we only got up to two stars, so we're not really losing much progress, fortunately. You know, at least we weren't up to like three stars when this happened. But yeah, we do have to work a bit to regain that, which I'm a little bit annoyed by. But we, I, I hopefully we only have to open it twice to get back to that, because that's how many times it took to get to that place the first time. But also, Piper is just feeling relieved about her relationship with Ariel this morning, because the previous night they did ha finally have a discussion where she found out why Ariel has been not wanting to tell people about the relationship and has been avoiding going out with Piper. And she was relieved in a way to find out that it wasn't anything that had to do with her personally, like that it wasn't that Ariel was embarrassed of Piper or was seeing someone else and Piper was on the side. Although she does really feel bad for the situation that Ariel is in and can certainly empathize with that. And she's just really hoping that she gets up the courage to tell her parents soon and that everything goes well. Because, I mean, it would be horrible if that wasn't how things went. But no matter what happens, Piper is there for Ariel. Like, she really meant that. Like, she really cares about Ariel and really wants us to become a serious relationship. And she's just glad that it wasn't anything that could really come between that. Or at least hopefully not. But she's just really hoping that things go well and she can get to know Ariel's family and kind of become a part of the family. Because that is something she really loves. Like, she just really likes getting close to people and feeling part of a new group. And that was something that she really liked with her relationship with, with um, Allison. Like, just how close she was to her parents and how often she would go over there and hang out with them. And she's just really hoping that that's how things turn out with this. But she's not exactly sure. But anyway, I think she's... I think her mood's pretty good. So we're just going to go ahead and open up the vet clinic for business. And I did also rename it to Magnolia Pet Hospital. Because last time I was talking about how I didn't think it should still be kept Magnolia Station. Um, also... Uh, let me make sure all the doors are locked because I realized the last time I ran this that some of the patients were going upstairs through that door because I completely forgot to lock it. Uh, yeah, let's lock that door for everyone but household members, right? Okay, so I think we're good. Oh, nice. And it looks like Bridget's over here. Oh, and she does not look that well. Yeah, I guess she's not having a good day. And that's another thing that Air that um, Piper wants to do. Like she wants to reconcile with Bridget because she has just been missing her friendship these past few months. Like, they've, they've been talking a little bit, but it's just, it's nothing like it used to be. Like, there's just, like, a little bit of awkwardness, and it's just kind of like small talk when they do see each other, and usually it's just them bumping into each other. So she really wants to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Bridget and, re, you know, get their friendship back to where it was. I mean, I think all really take is apology and just a discussion. But now's not really the time for that because, you know, she is running this vet clinic, so... She's going to be dealing with other patients. It's just not the right time to have this long heart-to-heart. -heart. So once she's done running the place for the day, we'll have her do that. Um, let's see. I've never seen Bella acting like this before. I hoped it would go away, but it's only gotten worse. Please see what you could do. All right. We'll just go ahead and take care of that. Does she have... Oh, she has... Okay, no, that's not... Oh, she has, like, a bunch of flies. Ooh, that does not look good. Aw. She's still happy, though. Like, even though she's sick, she's still happy. Oh, come on. I mean, at least like she did it while no one was watching. Um, Myla is wondering if I want to meet her someplace. Oh, that's so cute. I, what does she want? That is just really cute that her mother wants to meet her at a spa. Like, that's just adorable. I think now that she's not living with her parents, it will be fun for her to, like, go out places with them and visit them. Like, it'll be kind of a different thing where, you know, they meet going out to lunch instead of just seeing each other around the house. But we're obviously not going to do that now. But that just give me, does give me an idea. Like, if we have time in this part, maybe I will ever just go to the spa with her mom and... <laughs> They can have a cute little spa day, but let's get on with examining Bella here, so... Uh, let's examine Mouth. Uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious something's going on there. Oh, I also swapped out the vacuum they had for the higher quality one because someone told me, I think it was the last part or a couple parts ago, that this, or the, the cheap one actually won't 
Oh, God, I just heard the vomiting noises. That is really gross. But yeah, the uh, cheaper one apparently won't vacuum up vomit, so we're gonna need this one to do it. Uh, yeah, let's start the cleaning room. Oh, God. oh, I'm just like hearing the coughing noises. That is just disgusting. Okay, we gotta take care of that dog. Um, anyway, okay, back over here. We got uncontrollable drooling. Let's take test, uh, take temperature. Try to get this taken care of as quickly as possible. So it looks like she's wanting to give us a three star rating so far. So I'm really hoping we can actually get it up a half star. Uh, let's do a skin slash fur inspection. And then, while she, oh, poor dog. Oh, this dog is not, oh, this dog's feeling pretty bad. Like she can't even stand up, poor dog. Come on, Dakota. Oh, she's chasing her tail. Um, let's go ahead and give her Parasite Killer Spray. But yeah, while we are taking care of the patients, there is something that I wanted to talk about because as I'm sure pretty much all of you know, oh no, okay, she's feeling stressed out. We gotta take care of that. Okay, let's call him Pet. Um, but yeah, as I'm sure most of you know by now, we are getting seasons very soon, in less than three weeks, like two weeks from this coming Friday. And I, I have been having this expansion pack legacy going on where I've been using a different generation of the Fox Family Free Six each expansion pack. And, uh, oh, like their parents are just wanting to spend so much time with her. But anyway, I, I think I'm going to break the legacy for this expansion pack just because... Uh, why can't we not... Okay, come on. We, we already did that, but... um, kind of hard to talk at the same time with doing this, but... Yeah, you know, this is it's coming out in a little over two weeks. We're on part 26 of this series. I wanted to end it around part 40. So I'm just not going to be able to get up 14 parts of the series between now and then unless I, like... I just wouldn't be able to do that. Like, the parts of the are horrible. They'd be rushed. The, the series would end up so much worse. And then I also could cut the series short and then continue it, but... I don't want to do that either because we are, you know, we're just getting to a point where she's running her own vet clinic. And actually, if we, let's just see if we can, okay, there we go, greet patient warmly now. But yeah, like we're just getting to the point where she's running her own vet clinic. She's also going to be, pick, I'm also going to be picking one of the roommates that you all made. So I don't want to like pick a roommate and then end the series right after that. And I don't want to like end this and then pick up right where we left off with seasons because... I feel like I wouldn't really be able to set up a good backstory. It would feel kind of like it's part 31 of Cats and Dogs rather than Let's Play The Sims 4 Seasons. You know, like, I don't want to use my Seasons Let's Play to explore running a vet clinic. I want to keep that in this series. So I just think the best thing to do is to continue course with this series, finish it at around 40 parts, you know, do the series right, and then just use a different household for my Seasons Let's Play. So there will be some overlap between the two series. So um, let's calm them. So... Yeah, so we will have this series and the seasons that's like going on at the same time for a little while. And then we'll just use the Fox Family for whatever the next series, the next expansion pack is after that. So really, it won't be that long without the Fox Family. But I just want to, I don't want to make my Cats and Dogs Let's Play worse and my Seasons Let's Play worse just for the sake of continuing this legacy. I want to do things right. And plus, as much as I love the Fox Family, I've been playing with them for the past three years. So... I feel like it'd be good to take a break and just focus on a new family because there are so many other stories to tell. There's so many other sims I can make. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the McFadden slash Winslow family that I made in that creative sim about a month ago because I just really love that story. I think it would be such a good story for a Seasons Let's Play. And plus, I don't think a world's coming with Seasons, so I could just use the apartment that I made for them in it. I just feel like that, like, their story would be so much fun to explore in that series. Okay, so we got fleas. Uh, let's go ahead and give... Uh, I think it was the Parasite. Yeah, Parasite Killer Spray. Um, so anyway, I hope you all understand what I want to do. I just I just think that's the best thing to do because I want each series to be, to go well in its own right. You know, like, I don't want to make two series go worse just for the sake of continuing this. So while I won't be using the Fox Family in the Seasons Let's Play, they will be back again. And we will, of course, see some aspects of seasons in this Let's Play anyway, because, you know, we're going to have weather. Oh, poor kitty. Yeah, because we're going to have weather and all. So, yeah, we'll get to explore some of that in series, but I'm not going to focus on it on it solely. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, hopefully you'll understand why I want to do that. I just think it's it's definitely the best thing to do with the situation, because this pack is just coming out way sooner than I thought it was going to. But, uh, anywho... Not sure what is going on with Ollie, but it's not good. Do you think you could help? Sure, we'll help. Okay, come on. The Oh, well, I guess we're cleaning up the water over there. That's good, but yeah, please get this vomit over here, you stupid 
robo vacuum. Oh, it just makes me feel bad seeing that poor kitty plop down like that. Well, we'll take care of them. Um, I guess I'll let one more patient come in and then we'll disallow new customers after that. And I'm really hoping that we're doing a good enough job to actually get up the next star rating. Let's see. Uh, oh, can we see this here? All right, so growth opportunities are ambiance and quality of service and a good bedside manner is excellent. So I'm just really hoping that we get up another half star rating. So let's do, uh, let's test ears and maybe take temperature. I don't know, like maybe the cat has a little bit of a fever or something like that. It's feeling a little weak. And what else? Let's do an eye exam. Yeah, I'm really hoping I can get this vet clinic up to five stars before we end things. Because I just think that would be a really good point to get to before that. Ooh, so we got rainbow poop, rapid heartbeat. Oh, that's fun. Uh, let's examine, uh, I don't know, listen to heart. Oh, we know, ah, we don't need to do that. Cause she... Ooh, ooh, okay. All right, all right. We'll calm you down. There we go. Let's take care of that. Um, so we got this other customer here. Let's just go ahead and disallow new customers. So we'll take care of them. Can you not yell at my dog? Jeez, rude much? Yeah, so we'll just take care of their pet. And then after that, I think we'll be good to close things down. Because it is almost 3 o'clock. I wanted to have the evening to go over to Bridget's place to talk to her. Okay, good. So we can continue the treatment. Or no, not the treatment. The um, exam. Let's listen to breathing, see what's going on with that, and hopefully we'll figure out what's going on with- Oh! Ew, did she just waft her breath into her face? Well, I mean, I guess that's something- sweet breath. <laughs> Prismatic poop plague. Oh, that sounds fun. Biscuit with Medicine X, we'll do that. And we should be good to go. Ugh, I would not want to waft cat breath into my face. Although I guess that is a good way to tell when their teeth are rotting. Um, so if their breath is particularly bad, that's usually what that means. All right, so we are oh, only two stars. What does she think? Great service at a great price. Oh, come on. Can't you give us a higher rating than that in that case? Uh, where did that other cat go? Oh, there they are. All right, so we got Bartholomew A. Biddlebun Sr. That's such a cute pet name. All right, so we'll greet them warmly, take care of them, and then, uh, yeah, that should give us plenty of time to go over to Bridget's to talk to her and reconcile this relationship because also... Her and Bridget, oh, no, come on, stop eating. You don't need any peas. Please take care of the cat. You're going to give us a bad rating. Go re... Okay, let's try this again. Okay, I think warmly showing up now. Yeah, because um, someone informed me that their mood is what causes the greeting impatiently thing to show up. So, like, if they're in a bad mood, then they'll greet them impatiently. Yeah, so take care of that. But uh, like I was saying, Piper and Bridget always talked about how, like, once they're out of high school, they wanted to live together and be roommates. And... Piper has two extra bedrooms here, so she is thinking that Bridget would be a perfect roommate to fill one of those rooms. So she wants to make up with Bridget, get the friendship back to where it was, and then see if she still wants to live with her because she really does want her as a roommate. Like, she feels like that would be so much fun to live with Bridget. So when we go over there to have her apologize to Bridget, I will have her ask her to move in and see what happens with that because I just think it would be so cool to have Bridget move in with her. And then I will, of course, in a few parts, pick... A roommate for them so what i was thinking was i won't actually like officially pick the room until part 29 but what i wanted to do in part 28 was make this machinima like i just want to make this machinima where her and bridge are like interview interviewing the potential roommates so i'll use a bunch of the different roommates that you will have made in that video so you'll get to see them oh come on <laughs> and um and then I was thinking it would be really cool to pick like a, a final three in that part and then make a poll so you all could vote on which of those three you want to be the roommate just to involve you all with the process even more. I just think that would be super fun to have a poll, a poll and you all can help me choose their roommate from the final, like from the three that I choose. So I think we're going to do that. And then part 29, I will reveal who is the official roommate. And I was also thinking that with some of the Sims that, because um, I was talking about before, but how I wanted to add all of them in. So another thing I was thinking was that I could make a friendship group group for whoever the roommate is and just put some of the other sims that you all have made in it. So that way some of those sims are like their friends that they hang out with and maybe they can, like Piper and Bridget can kind of become part of that friend group. So even though only one sim will be cho chosen as a roommate, I just want to incorporate more of the sims that you all have made because they're just so, like, I've been looking at the the hashtag and I keep seeing more and more awesome sims coming in so it's just gonna be so hard to choose which is another reason why I want to get you all involved with that 
All right, so we got them calmed down. Let's go ahead and, okay, no, we're not there yet. Um, extreme lethargy. Let's test ears. See if that gets it. I just, oh, I love how Dakota is just like coming in and hanging around to her, keeping her company. So cute. I just love how loyal she is. All right, let's see how we're doing with the reviews. All right, still got the same. Oh, wait time is excellent too. Inflamed cuteness gland. Aw. Oh, hold on. There it was. Okay, so administer that shot. And fingers crossed our rating goes up. Like, even if it's just half a star, I'll be happy. I just wanted to go up some. All right, so I got woozy kitty-itis. Oh, that's what that other cat had before. All right, so we'll have her finish up with this. And then I think now, oh, we made 800 simoleons. We're doing pretty well. I also had a couple of medicines that I stuck in this cooler over here. So good to see people bought those. So it is nice that people actually buy that when you put it out. But we're just going to go ahead and close. Oh, no. Oh, we didn't even have the star rating go up at all. I don't know why. Like, I thought we actually did pretty well. That's really frustrating. All right, try increasing the quality of your supplies. That whole thing again. Ambiance could be better. Try cleaning up. <sighs> All right, at least our value of service is pretty good. Yeah, oh no. Oh, come on. What a crap vacuum. Come on, start the cleaning routine. Let's clean that up. But now that we're done with running the vet clinic, I'm going to have her change out of her scrubs and go over to Bridget's house and have a conversation with her and hopefully get things back to where they were. Uh, let's go with this outfit. And then we'll just go ahead and travel over there. I guess we could bring Dakota with us. Why not? She can play with Bella a bit. I don't think I'm going to bring... I don't know, because I was kind of thinking about bringing Bella with her. But I think Bella's also kind of, you know, her sister and her mother's dog too. So I don't think we should take Bella with Bridget if she moves in. Yeah, I think Bella should stay where she is. Because I did also, like, I, I talked about this in the last part too, but... I was thinking it would be nice to have Piper get a puppy, so I don't know, like maybe once the two of them moved in together, they can get a puppy to celebrate it. Although it, it might be difficult to have a puppy and be trying to run a vet clinic at the same time. Not really sure. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't know, I just think, or maybe we can even get it. Oh dear, she is still sick. Ugh, not good. Okay, where is Bridget? Let's just go over here, knock on the door and see if she's home. Hopefully she is and we can chat with her. So yeah, she's just kind of dropping by just to chat with Bridget. Because um, she's just, I don't know, like just, it's fun living on her own, but it's also kind of lonely and kind of scary. So, oh, aw, off her gratitude. That's cute. So we'll get to know her. We'll go in here and talk to her. Maybe they can go outside and chat where there's somewhere a little bit more private because everyone's kind of right in this room. So let's go ahead and uh, let's have them just go outside. We'll, we'll see if we can have them sit together here and just chat. There we go. So we just get a little bit of privacy and we're not talking with the TV going and the stereo going in front of her mother and sister. So let's enthuse about the outdoors and then let's just get to... Oh, she needs to go to the bathroom. But let's just get to a deep conversation. Where is that? Ah, there it is. And oh, how bad does she need to go to the bathroom? Can we hold off? I think we can hold off for a little bit more and just... Get to it and say, look, I'm really sorry for what I said a while ago. Like, I should not have told you what to do like that. I should not have been that aggressive about it. I'm just really sorry. And Bridget is just like, you know, I, I shouldn't have yelled at you either. I shouldn't have reacted like that. And honestly, you were kind of right because it turns out that Shane, Shane told, when, Shane, when um, Bridget confronted Shane about it, Shane admitted that he and Zoe had had this thing going for a little while. Like, it had actually been a few months. Like, it wasn't just... It wasn't just prom night. And he said that, like, he was really sorry. He just wanted to be honest with her about it. And that, you know, he had ended things with Zoe. And he really cared about Bridget. Really, really wanted to continue their relationship. And, you know, Bridget, Bridget wanted to believe him. She continued on with the relationship for a bit, thinking that, you know, it could continue on as it was. But this whole thing just caused something to shift in their relationship and things didn't feel the same she just didn't quite feel like she could trust him knowing that this thing had been going on behind her back for a while so a little bit after this happened she did end up dumping him fairly recently so she is still a little bit down because of that breakup but you know she told Piper that she realized that she was right that she should have just broken up with him in the first place and as much as Piper wants to say that she was right and say I told you soon so and assert her correctness she's not going to so let's have her I guess tell her, tell her some kind of secret and give her a hug. Like, I feel like, oh, banter with old friend, that would be good to do. So we can have her banter with old friend, you know, like they've 
they've kind of made up. You know, they've apologized, apologized to each other for how they acted. I mean, they should have done this a lot sooner than they did, but at least they've done it. Things are feeling pretty good. They're just glad to have each other's friendships back. So we'll have them banter a little bit. We'll have her give her a hug. There we go. We'll do that. And then, now that we've done that, things are feeling pretty good. Let's have her ask her if she wants to move in. Just say, hey, so I'm living at the vet clinic that used to be my grandmother's bakery by myself. And I've got two extra rooms. Like, if you still want to, you want to move in with me? All right. So I think we're good. Yeah, I think she's, I think she said that she's all for it. So we're going to go ahead and get Bridget in as part of her household. And I'm just, I'm just so excited for this. Excited for the two of them to live together and to explore Bridget's life a little bit more as well. So we'll go ahead and move her in. All right, there we go. We are done. All right, so here we are with, oh, I guess she's, uh, let's, let's bring Bridget here. Um, but yeah, we now have Bridget in her household. And uh, yeah, the whole recent breakup with Shane was why she was looking a little down earlier when she came into the clinic, but she is feeling happier now, especially after that conversation that she had with Piper. Let's see a secret. Oh, it's from revealing a secret. A deep connection so she's feeling good like they had a nice deep connection she's you know feeling feel just feeling happy after that conversation that they had and i also uh, you know what actually let's have them travel back to the back clinic so we'll just have them or actually i don't know we can just have them hang out here for a little bit um because you know we still have to get bridget's stuff into the back clinic you know into the apartment above it anyway but i just want to show her traits and her aspiration all that because i haven't really done that so she is cheerful creative and a little bit of a slob which might get on Piper's nerves like it might be one of those things where they find out they aren't quite as good roommates as they thought they were gonna be so we'll see how that goes with Bridget being a little bit of a slob but she's also a muser so that's from her creative aspiration because she does want to be a best-selling author so she's just really into writing so we'll be sure to put a computer room so she can go ahead and write her own book so yeah I'm really looking forward to getting into this also yeah, she doesn't have a job yet, so we'll go ahead and get her a job in the writer career. I think that's definitely the best thing for her, and then maybe she can help Piper at the vet clinic a little bit on the side. Not sure what we're going to do with that yet. Uh, but let's just go ahead and do this. So, where was it? Writer? There we go, all the way at the bottom. Alright, so she is now a writer's assistant. Oh, I'm just so glad both of their lives are getting started. And also, yeah, her and Shane are, of course, broken up. I mean, she does still have some lingering feelings for him. You know, unfortunately, like, once you break up with someone, like, the feelings don't always go away. Like, they did have a, a really nice relationship. She was, like, he he was her first love. You know, this is our first relationship, so she's not 100% over it. Like, she still has some feelings for him, but um, I'm sure as time goes on, those will go away. But now that things are good with these two, I'm going to get them on home, and I'll be back the next morning. So Bridges all moved into the apartment, and here is her room. She just moved some of the furniture that she had in her room at her mother's house in here. So we just got the same bed, same nightstand, same wardrobe, and all of that. And this room is a bit cozy, but I was able to fit everything that she needed in. She's currently just practicing writing to work on her aspiration a little bit. And originally I thought this room was a smaller one, but it's actually... Just a half tile bigger than the one down here, which isn't much, but I did realize that it would probably be better to put her up here because the bedroom is slightly bigger and also I just think it would make more sense to put these two together. So that way the roommate, who they don't know nearly as well, is just down here on their own. So there's just a little bit more privacy that way because this floor up here is just all Bridget and Piper's. Uh, but anyway, Bridget does have to go to work in a couple of hours. So what I want to do before ending this part was have them adopt a puppy or maybe an adult dog. Not sure yet what, you know, what we'll do yet. We'll see what pops up when we go to adopt because yeah, I'm just really wanting to get a new dog in this household. And I think Piper has really been wanting to adopt a puppy of her own. And now that she's living on her own, there's no one to tell her she can and that they already have two more, too many pets. She's going to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and check that. I think it was... Pretty sure it was here. Higher service. Yeah, I think that's where I was. Haven't done this in a while. Uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and adopt a dog. And I'm just really, really excited for this. Hopefully they'll bring the dog here because technically... Oh, is that because... Hmm, let's just try that again. Yeah, because technically this isn't their home lot. Because what I had to do is they're technically living on an empty lot. And then I just bring them here and keep them here. So essentially it's like they're living on this lot, but technically it's not their home. All right, so I think this isn't working because of that. All right, so I took her back to the home lot and tried having her adopt a dog from there and it's not working. So 
I'm guessing that the whole adopting thing just isn't working for whatever reason, unfortunately, which is super annoying. So I guess um, before the next part, I'll just make a puppy for her. So in the next part, she'll have a puppy, which is Aww. not what I was wanting to do, but oh well. And I know Raven Dreamer also suggested that I could have her adopt a stray. So maybe we could do both. I don't know. Like, I kind of want to have her adopt a puppy for now. And then perhaps later on, we could have her get to know a stray and adopt them. Uh, let's okay, I don't know what that was about. Yeah, it's really annoying. Like, is, uh, is the whole adoption thing not working for anyone else? Because it's working perfectly fine before, but I don't know if a recent patch broke it or something like that, or if, I don't know, I just have something wonky going on in the game. It's really, really annoying. But oh well. I think what we can do before the end of the part is work on having her train Dakota a little bit, because I just want to work on, work on just having Dakota know a whole bunch of tricks, so we'll train her to shake and... See how far we can get with this before we end things. I don't know, because it would be cool to have her learn another another trick. Oh, she wants to get out in the city. Oh, well, that's cute. Yeah, we'll pan that. We can have her get out to the city sometime. And then, I don't know, maybe the next part I'll have her do that whole spotty thing I was talking about with her mom. Or, I don't I'm not sure yet, because I also wanted her to run the vet clinic again to try to get the rating of that up some. Okay, are we are we done teaching her that already? Oh, okay, yeah, let's, I don't know why she stopped for some reason. Nice, all right, so Dakota learned how to shake, and I think now that we've done this, oh, good, she's giving her a treat now that she learned that, but yeah, now that we've taught Dakota another trick, I'm gonna go ahead and end this part here, and yeah, I think I'm just gonna make a puppy for her before the next part. I'll have to figure out what breed, um, you know, actually, what breed do you all think I should make for Piper? Like, what kind of, what breed dog do you guys see her having? Like, I was thinking more of an energetic breed, like a golden retriever or a collie, but there might be some other unique breeds that would work well for her. So yeah, let me know what you all think on that. And I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and bye.